Yo, 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 what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be on how I ended up making over $10,000 on GBP JPY, catching the buy and the sell. And for anyone that wants proof, because apparently I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a capper and I don't know how to trade. So if you guys want proof, here you go. So this is the entry for the sell, GBP JPY. I had to, um, you know, get it on my computer. And then this is the money and the profit. You could see my entry, 158142. And the buy was right over here. We caught the buy first and then we caught the sell. So let's go over what we ended up or let's go over what my initial thought process was and how I actually caught these two trades. So let me start off by going back in time right here and let me just delete everything. Let's literally delete everything and start fresh. So I'm going to give you guys an idea of what's going through my mind when I'm looking at the charts. So when I'm looking at the charts, first things first is. I'm figuring out what type of stage is the market in, right? So, for example, if we go back in time a bit, um, just over here, we could see that the market, like, GJ was crazy in this area. It was just really confusing. You didn't really know what, whether to sell, whether to buy, right? Because structure was kind of just in a range. So, it, there, wasn't any, there wasn't any clear ideas or signals telling you to buy or sell so in this situation what do you do well the way i look at the market nowadays is just from a wyckoff perspective so the market moves in these types of stages so either price is going to be moving in a um accumulation obviously we know that the accumulation is you know we have the our, um oh my bad i marked it up wrong so let me go over this again so the accumulation is the market starts off by selling off that's number one it starts off by selling off and the accumulation is basically the sellers start losing that uh, selling momentum and buyers come in, right? And then they start consolidating price. They start accumulating. And then we have that major expansion towards the upside. Now, this over here, this bottom is going to be considered as your accumulation. So let's mark that up right here. Now, what you're going to see next is either price is going to continue going bullish, right? It's going to either continue going bullish. But most of the time, what we're going to see is the market comes back down and then it consolidates. And at this moment, people start assuming that, oh, the market is getting ready to sell off again. This is going to be our distribution. But nine out of 10 times, what actually ends up happening is the market rallies up once again. So what is this called? Right. Because market did consolidate and then it pushed up. And that's the definition of our accumulation. The market consolidates and then it pushes up. That's how we you know, differentiate from a distribution and an accumulation. Well, this is your reaccumulation. And what's actually happening right here is price is consolidating at them um, after a major expansion to accumulate more orders and then to push price up higher and once we reach you know after the accumulation happens and then we have the reaccumulation that's when the market is most likely going to find its final stages of the distribution before we go down so now let's mark this up right here as the distribution and boom so this is the stages of how the market is moving. We have our accumulation and then the market rallies. It creates the reaccumulation and then it rallies again and then creates that final distribution before it ends up selling off. But when we do sell off, where is price action heading to? That's the, that's the question that we have to understand. Where is price action heading to? Well, price action is going to be heading to those points of interest, those liquidities and institutional candles that the market first left off. So we can see that inside of our first accumulation, we have our first low, it gets manipulated. We have our second low, it gets manipulated. Third low gets manipulated. And then we finally rally. So our main um, you know, our vision where our eyes should be focusing on is where that rally happened because that rally is where the big money was pumped in and smart money started actually making their big moves. Before this rally, what was happening is smart money was putting a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there just to, um, what's the word, like manipulate people into thinking, oh, the market did give me a break of structure, so I'll start buying here. But what ends up happening is we manipulate that low and then price rallies. And that's the beauty of Wyckoff. Understanding Wyckoff tells you all of this so if you can understand wyckoff you're but basically cracking the story of market structure so where does price action end up going well it ends up going towards those last institutional candles and what i usually do is i look for at my reaccumulation and then i see okay is there any institutional candles at the start of this major expansion move towards the upside you know and then looking at this theoretical example we have you know two points of interest that the market is most likely going to be going to 
And the best way to know whether these points of interest are going to hold is by also checking what time frame you're on. If you're on the higher time frames, nine out of 10 times, the market is going to tap inside this point of interest. It's going to give you some type of move before selling off, or it's just going to give you a really clean move towards the upside. But these points of interest will 125% give you a nice intraday move towards the upside. So now let's go to GBP, JPY, and let's understand that what, what was happening over here. Well, in, in my view, what was actually happening is the market pushed up and then we had some type of consolidation. You might say that this is your reaccumulation or yeah, you can say that this is technically your reaccumulation. And um, let's do that right here. Reaccumulation. After that reaccumulation was um finished, we saw that major move towards the upside. And like I said before, the market has to come back down to tap inside those institutional candles that it didn't tap in before. So we have one over here that the market respected. It came in down into this point of interest, this last order block. It respected, gave you a pretty decent 317 pip move, and then it went down. And then we ended up going back down to mitigating this low price comes down respects it and then it goes up so from a wyckoff standpoint you could see that the market always comes back down towards those real accumulations and accumulations but it's going to be respecting those lows it's not really going to break the accumulation because once we start breaking lows like over here and over here like we disrespect it a lot that's when the market is going to be confirmed to be in a distribution schematic and we're going to continue lower um so right over here we could see that after a reaccumulation we've reached the highest point and then this is where obviously price action started distributing. And we could see that this distribution confirmed that the market is coming back down to mitigate this IC. So now we know that the higher time frame point of interest to focus on is going to be this area. Now let's see what ends up happening after this. <coughs> Now, boom, right after we ended up mitigating this institutional candle, we have another rally towards the upside. Now, this is beautiful. We have the next rally towards the upside. So what is this? Well, after this nice prolonged move towards the downside, we have what? A decent consolidation. And then once again, a final move towards the upside. So I could say confidently that this was my accumulation. This was the market accumulating, picking up all these orders. And let's actually go down into a deeper um perspective of this so we can actually decode what's happening so first things first um first things first boom so we could say that all right this is our ps this is our seller's climax automatic rally you know you could say that this is your secondary test somewhere right here sometimes you're not going to have that secondary test that's that's something that you're going to have to you know remember sometimes you won't you won't get those secondary tests so we'll get used to that but we have our ps right here we have our seller's climax the automatic rally right here and then the market comes back down you could even say that this is your secondary test because all the secondary test is is it's just testing any little bit of supply that was left inside of the area where the seller's climax was now after the secondary test um right over here you could see that right over here we have this final manipulation of this low before price action goes up and breaks structure right here so let's actually like you know make this a little bit cleaner let me make this way way more cleaner so you can see that inside of this little um oh yeah so inside of this little Okay, I got to make this a little nicer. My bad, guys. Yeah, so here we go. That's cleaner. So now we have this little lower, low, lower high structure being formed, right? We can see that the market is respecting this, these lower lows, lower highs. Right as soon as we finally manipulate this last low, right? We, we break structure, essentially. We break this low right here. What happens? The market rallies. And what does it do? It breaks structure right here. We break this pretty clean lower, low, lower high. And then we have that break of structure. And then you could obviously re-enter right here for that final spring test. So this is what's happening. That's how we know that this is our accumulation. So boom. And then after, you know, we confirm that this is our accumulation, what's going to happen next? Well, at this point, I went straight down to the 15 minute time frame. I think it was the 15 minute. Or um, let me go back to the 45 and let's just play, wait for a couple more price action candles to form. Because I did definitely wait for more yeah all right we are right over here all right so let's let the market do its thing right let the markets do its thing and all right we have to speed this up my bad guys my bad just bear with me real quick i it was right here yep it was right over here so at this point when you're staring at the market right over here there's no way to really confirm whether you're in a cumul uh, whether you're in a distribution 
or a reaccumulation. It's really hard to tell. The way I identify that whether it's a distribution or reaccumulation is by understanding the final stage. The final stage is either going to make a big move down or a big move up. Now, obviously, if you really want to look at the terms and um, you know study the terms, what they mean and how they look and stuff like that, there's you could easily find out whether price is in an accumulation or a distribution or reaccumulation. But the way I like to trade is simple. I like to keep things extremely simple. So what I do is I simply wait for that final move towards the upside that breaks a ton of structure. And we found that right over here. So boom, we find that right over here on the 15 minute time frame. Now, if I highlight this area, right and i and i see that this is where the market rallied consolidated rallied again which confirms that this is my re reaccumulation now before we get into you know marking this up in the gray and stuff like that what i actually want to do is i want to dead like you know look inside the the zone where the reaccumulation happened and just keep things simple before we get into you know wyckoff and stuff like that i want to get into liquidity and market structure so once we come towards this high what do we have What's the first thing that we noticed? The first thing that I'm noticing is that we accumulated a range. We created a really clean um, range of resistance and a range of support. So even with Wyckoff, Wyckoff is just liquidity. That's essentially what it is because we're basically taking out the lows and we're oh, okay, my bad. I'm all over the place. We're taking out the lows and we're taking out the highs, right? In the in a uh, accumulation, we're taking out the lows and a you know a distribution, we're taking out the highs. So basically, right here we have this area of consolidation where the market created a such a support or a touch of resistance, another touch of resistance, touch of resistance, resistance, and then support, support, support. We eventually break that level of support. And then we rally up to take that area of the resistance and then we come back down. Now, once again, what do you notice? We have another area where the market is just consolidating, right? So the same exact thing is happening left and right. The exact same thing. We're just creating more liquidity, more liquidity for the market to take out. And essentially, that's what Wyckoff is. It's just taking liquidity. But now if we're looking at this from a, you know, a Wyckoff terms perspective, what I could say is, all right, this is my PSY. This is my buyer's climax right here. And then um, over here, we have our automatic rally. And then we have our secondary test right here. And then after the secondary test, we have the spring towards the downside. And then we have our minor sign of strength. And then once again, we have the spring test. And then we have our final last point of support. Now, if you want to know what these terms stand for, watch my new or watch my old video on Wyckoff and, and, I, and I explain all these things. But basically, after I finally got all these terms and I saw the major move towards the upside was finished and it happened, all I needed to do now was just look for my institutional candle. Now, this is where things may get a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try my best to keep things simple. So the first thing I do is I go down to the smaller time frames or sorry, I go down to the higher time frames because the higher time frame OBs is where, you know, you're going to find the best order blocks, in my opinion. Now, from the three hour, I saw this institutional candle, but I wasn't too interested in it because one, it seemed like it already got tested and it just didn't have that much volume in it. So then I went down to the two hour and I said, oh, here we go. Now we have something better. We have a pretty clean institutional candle on the two hour time frame. It's really big. It has a lot of volume and momentum and we haven't tested it. So then I was like, all right, bet, but I need to refine this. So one hour ended up refining it up to here went to the 45 nothing went dropped straight down to the 15 and on the 15 minute time frame i found um you know this ic right here this one that i'm focusing on right over here let me make this a little bit cleaner um let's make this yellow and boom so the reason i was focusing on this one is specifically because one you might say this is tested but i could just make the argument that okay here we go right? This one isn't tested. And in my opinion, these little wicks that you see inside the IC, it's not, this is not a mitigation. This is completely not a mitigation in my opinion. You could argue, but yeah, it's just my opinion. So I thought that this was an unmitigated institutional candle. It's the last point of support. It makes sense for the market to come back down to the original area where price first expanded. So this is where I set my limit. And you guys saw the entry, right? It was at, um, let me just double check. Let me just quickly check the, um, my MetaTrader. Let me check my broker and then we can get this thing going. So the entry for the buy was at 157. 
My oh, so my bad, my bad. It was one five seven zero four seven. So let me mark this up. One five seven zero four seven. So there we go. Now let's go down to the five minute. Maybe I. So it looks like I went down to the smaller time frames to refine it. Ah, so I, I, I took this one. My apologies. So I took this institutional candle instead. Now, if you guys watch my supply and demand video, this would make a lot more sense to you. Because what, what I usually do in situations like these where you can't find a clean institutional candle, I take the entirety of the consolidation before the major move up. So you can see that this is where the high of the consolidation where price sold off, sold off right here came up over here and then we were just consolidating before the market took off so you could do that or you could just be a little bit you know um conservative and uh you know refine it till you can't refine it anymore and that's essentially what i did so i set my limit and let's see what price action did at this point you're just waiting that's it you just have to wait and the market taps in now let's go on a deeper dive and see what happened after the market tapped in first of all I already, I already have my Wyckoff confirmation. So because of that reason, I wasn't interested in, um, in you know, looking for extra confirmation because a Wyckoff confirmation is already enough. That's something you got to remember. Wyckoff is a big confirmation. And that's why I wasn't too stingy about, you know, having the best entry in the world. So from here we get triggered in and the market completely takes off now what are the some what are some of the things i look for well some of the things i look for are breaks of structures right structure being broken on the macro time on the micro time frames so from here we have a micro lower low lower high right here right My, micro low low lower high and then boom price starts breaking these ma uh, micro lows or micro lower highs and this is me my confirmation that the market is getting ready to go higher because one thing you have to remember is every single lower high is a type of supply every single lower high is a type of supply and every single higher low is a type of demand that's something that i'm you know realizing just now so once we break these areas of supply what's actually happening is these break of structures are saying okay now that i broke this high i'm allowed to come back to maybe this high and if i break this high my next objective is going to be this high so basically we're just breaking highs and highs and highs until we finally find that one point of supply that will actually hold so then this is the next level and then this is the next level and then this is well this one already got tested so that's what i was waiting for i'm just waiting for all of these highs to get broken obviously i'm moving my stops to break even and i'm doing my thing and now notice this even on the smaller time frames just like i said about the wyckoff thing the um we have a you know a major move up and then we have this area where price consolidates and then we have another major move up and then price consolidates again right and this is a, your reaccumulation so over, we have our smaller time frame accumulation we have the reaccumulation rally reaccumulation and then another rally and i didn't see this obviously but this probably would have been a pretty good entry for a re-entry if you didn't catch this and let's just see if this plays out because you know at this point this is a back test example but um all right i'm assuming we didn't make it back down there but let's go down to the 15 minute time frame let's just do this now we're coming up to an area where we could have sold and let me explain why i was looking to sell at this area the reason i was looking to sell in this area right here was because one when price action finished its reaccumulation rallied we created a higher high higher low structure right here you can see that we have this um we have this high or we have this low and we have this high all right let me just copy paste this make this easier control v control c boom so we have this higher high, higher low and then the market is obviously respecting these lows indicating that we are bullish and then boom so what i'm all but what i also noticed is that because we created these higher highs higher lows in price and made it up to this point we disrespected a really important higher low now this higher low was disrespected which indicates that this area where the market consolidated was definitely an area of distribution where price action and institutional traders were looking to invest their money in shorts instead of buys and the fact that we like i said before every single higher low has demand and every single lower high has supply the, the amount of demand and supply is obviously it varies and it's different but that doesn't change the fact that every single higher low and lower has supply and demand in this area there's obviously some type of demand and that's why price came into it reacted a bit before destroying it but remember 
because we broke this this means that sellers are in in position they're in power and price is rallying back up to the original area where the market first sold off towards the downside breaking a ton of structure so at this point what i said is all right bet let me look for my last institutional candle or let me look for that last impulsive move towards the downside that gave me that um where i could find my institutional candle and let's go back to the the sell position the sell position for the after the buy happened at 158142 so let me mark this up right now 158142 there we go i think my tp for the buy was right over here something like that so at this point i said all right this is my last institutional candle right here my last bullish candle before the bearish move towards the downside that broke structure i'm just gonna set a limit right here and we'll sell right because we broke structure we have our wyckoff confirmation and momentum is clearly shifting towards the downside after we mitigate this institutional candle so boom over here i set my limit stop loss was just over here at this high and take profit i think take profit let me quickly check my thing again take profit was one five seven five six six so let's go down a bit right over here all right boom so this was a pretty clean eight to one i think the reason i targeted here was because i was looking to buy at this like i showed you guys before i was looking to buy once again at this area where the reaccumulation where the reaccumulation happened so yeah that's the area that i was looking to buy at and let me just mark this up right here boom so now let's just see what price action does as it taps into our area so our buys our buys already got you know hit our tp got hit for the buys and you know we're, we're not tripping we, we just we, you know we made some money and now we're just waiting for price to come to our sell now right over here let's go down to the one uh three minute let's go down to the one minute matter of fact so on the one minute time frame and you guys saw my entry you know you guys saw all of that so on the one minute time frame you guys can see the entry it is one five seven sorry one five eight one four two so we get triggered in with a limit now th this is sometimes why you might want to wait for some extra confirmation but i didn't seem to wait because i probably had things i had to do you know i was busy but yeah the market triggered us in and stop loss almost got hit this is why you have to account for spread make sure you're always accounting for your spread but the market rallies up doesn't hit our stop loss but ends up selling off and it just did its thing from here right let me go down to the 15 minute make this a little quicker and we can see what ends up happening now from here market sells off i'm assuming we broke some five minute structure let's take a look at this maybe the some one minute structure yeah so we can see some uh, micro higher highs higher lows right and then the market ends up taking some out and then comes back up to mitigate an institutional candle that was formed at the high of this area before selling off and breaking structure so like i said before we have this major move towards the downside Right, and I'm assuming this happened in London session as well. Oh no, this was Asia. That makes sense. But we have this major move towards the downside, and then price action comes back up to mitigate any institutional candles that were the cause of those major moves down. Now we can go down to the one hour and let's just see what price action ends up doing, and we end up just completely blasting our take profit. Now one thing I want to show you is like I should like I said before that area where the reaccumulation um was formed, which was right here was it respected well let's take a look right over here price action taps or you maybe if you did like you know refine it a bit too much you might have missed it but um i would have missed it in my opinion but if you took that ic instead you would have seen that your institutional candle would have been respected or not even then i'm okay so i'm, I'm assuming you'd end up missing it but stop loss would have been like right here and then take profit would probably be like over here yeah something like that you'd probably end up missing it either way but you could see that still the market reacted somewhat off of that area of reaccumulation and then we end up selling back off uh, selling all the way back down probably to like you know do the same thing again but like i showed you guys before look at this now now let's actually take a look at this from a wyckoff perspective so this is gonna blow your mind this is gonna blow your mind once you understand this your mind is gonna be blown trust me so we have our reaccumulation right here right after that reaccumulation we have one more reaccumulation well technically you could say that this is a higher time frame distribution so that's what we're gonna do we have our um reaccumulation right here once again and then we have our final distribution phase right over here 
Now, once we have that final distribution, what happens? The market sells off. We sell off. What do we do? We redistribute this time. We redistribute. And then the market solves off, sells off again. If we went on to the one minute time frame, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see that the market had a really small mini accumulation. Once we have that accumulation, what do we have? Reaccumulation, reaccumulation. And then price comes inside of our point of interest, which is right over here. And what does it do? Oh, my bad. What does it do? It distributes this time. We tap inside of that point of interest and we create a distribution and then we sell off down and do what? We create another redistribution. So this is the market cycle that the market is moving from. It's moving in cycles of reaccumulation, distribution, redistribution, accumulation, stuff like that. So look at this. And just to make this a little bit cleaner, let's make a hypothetical example. And let's go up right here. So just look at this. So the market rallies up, does its thing, right? Consolidates and then goes up again. So we could say that, all right, this is our reaccumulation right here. Now, right after that reaccumulation, what do we have? We have a distribution, right? And the market sells off, sells off. And then what happens? We distribute and we sell off again. So this is your redistribute. This is your distribution. And then this is your redistribution. And the market is just going to keep going down until it finds a point of interest where it could finally accumulate and stop selling off from. So this proves my theory, not my theory, but it proves that the market is moving off of objectives. It's moving off of points and objectives of where it wants to head next. So right here, we finally fi uh, tap inside that point of interest and then we go up. And then what do we do? We reaccumulate. Um, shit, I'm running out of space. We reaccumulate. The market does its thing. And then taps into the next point of interest. Let's say the next point of interest is like right here, taps inside of it. And then what does it do? It distributes and then it sells off. So the market is literally moving in points of reaccumulation, distribution, distribution, reaccumulation, redistribution. So that's how I caught this much money just off of GBP, JPY, just by understanding Wyckoff and, you know, all these beautiful concept so if you guys have any questions please leave a comment below i showed you the proof of entry of the sell i didn't get the buy you know the the buy entry i did show you the money that i made off of it but i didn't i didn't take a screenshot of how much um i don't know how much but uh the screenshot of you know the market triggering me in and my entry and stuff like that so i'll make sure i do do that next time but thank you guys so much for watching i hope this video helped you if you guys need any questions please leave them in the comment below i'll try to answer you as asap but um yeah thank you guys so much and have a beautiful day